Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. And I'm Holly. And this is my favorite. Uh, I, I want this one. And in today's video, we will discuss and I will try and convince Holly <laughs> that we need this 2022 Genesis GV70 in our lives. Oh, sorry. Are you done? We're, we're filming. Um, Holly, I, I like it. I, I love it. I, I'm trying to be unbiased on this one, but it is very hard. So I, I'm just going to throw it to you. What do you think of the styling of this <clears throat> gorgeous SUV? Are you trying to sway my opinion? Ah, just mm, go, take it. <laughs> I really like it. Yes. Um, I think it's sleek. From the front, it looks like a very fancy, very expensive car. Yes. Um, thankfully, it's affordable yes. <laughs> and not six figures. Right. But, it, but you, I it mean, honestly, it gives that presence. The front is very sleek. I like this little Whoever designed logo. this grill, it is so multifaceted that just moving around it, it shines and sparkles at you. Uh, mm, ah like <laughs> yes sorry uh, mm, mm. calm down slow yes. down the line the lines of the lights those are different just a little something that makes it it is feel something more that genesis is leaning very heavy into with their new design language these two lines appear on all of their vehicles now and is a distinct signature of the genesis brand yeah well it's good it's working for them i like it and it's we always talk about we appreciate features on cars that are different than other cars and i think they've done that with this vehicle so genesis has been headhunting premium brands from across the globe and getting the best and the brightest and i think that they are definitely taking some risks in design and we'll talk about it all the way back to the back but uh, just this here the overlap mm -hmm. of the hood giving it this clamshell effect the fact that this line here starts flush with the uh, quarter panel but ends up just coming back and overlapping the quarter panel back here from a design and engineering perspective that's tough to do but oh just it makes and then, all the difference, right? Yeah, and then in this pearl white paint, you really can't tell with this overcast day, but just the way the light catches all the lines in it, uh, I, mm, I'm trying not to be smitten in this one, but I am awfully smitten in this so one. So you would go for a white? So uh, apparently a lot of people do because they have three different white options. This is the middle one that cost $500. There is a $1,500 white option I can't pronounce names. I definitely can't pronounce the name of this white, but yes, I, I really do like the white on this one. And they offer a navy blue interior. We don't have it, but <laughs> oh, you know I like my navy blue. So, yeah. Uh, it's only offered on the white one? Uh, I, I've spent some time in the configurator. I can't seem to get myself off of the, the three shades of white, so I can't tell you that for sure. Let us know down in the comments. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this, this white one's got me kind of hook, line, and sinker. Yeah? Yeah. 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 There's a green that I really like as well. But why don't we move around to the side and talk about the profile because the designers took a lot of risks and chances there with the profile as well. All right, Holly, we talked about this line here that starts with the, the, the hood and the fender and how it overlaps and it goes all the way back here, back to the back. Uh, just small touches like that, uh, that I really appreciate about the design of this vehicle. It's very unique and different in the segment. They took a lot of risks, but this isn't about me. I did my own review. What are your thoughts on the styling of the 22 Genesis GV70? I really like it from the side as well. Like you said, you have this line that goes all the way to the back, but you also have this one that hugs around the hip of the car. Then you have this that goes around the tires. Which thankfully is body colored, which gives it a classier look than mm -hmm. if they had done black plastic like many other designers do. Right. I really like it. I like the little chrome detail at the bottom and then just a little bit here on the top of the handle, which is 
just enough. I feel like if you get too much, you you bling it out. You bling it out <laughs> too much, and then you have this chrome that goes down like that on the on the windows and stuff. I don't know. I just I really like it from the side. It's some of those little details that aren't big, but make right. a big difference in in the style, the way it looks, and the way you feel about the car. Yeah, you mentioned that chrome strip that dips down underneath that back window. If they had carried it above along the top, it would have looked like a normal greenhouse of any other compact luxury SUV. I'm curious how long it is before other manufacturers start copying that very design theme because Genesis and the Hyundai brand uh, is really setting the bar for style and design here lately, uh, which carries around as we go on to the back. All right, Holly, we are at the back end of the Genesis GV70, and I, I like it. Uh, we get the continuation of the two lines and the LED taillights, but again, something about me. What are your thoughts? We all know I like it. So I like how this comes out over. That's mm -hmm. kind of cool looking, but um, this is my least favorite angle of the car. Okay. <laughs> um, it's... I know they probably took a risk on it. Um, it's not one that's, that sits well with me. Um, just for, we're just not talking about functionality or anything like that, just the way it looks. And it kind of looks to me, you're gonna laugh, maybe you won't even know, like the little ghost thing in Super Mario Brothers. Okay. That, like, <laughs> <laughs> is it just because it's white to like elaborate? I think, I think it's a combo of the shape of it. Okay. And then if you're looking at the car from the back, right? Um, not from the side, but from the back, it could look like a little, a little, a little creature. Okay. A little white okay. roly poly. Interesting take. Okay. Well, some things I noticed, uh, I'll had to go in and step on the brake because I really like this LED third brake light here. They've integrated the hatch button here underneath the uh, rear windshield wiper. Again, we talked about the LED taillights, that two line design mm -hmm. carrying over from the front, spelling out Genesis on the back. Really like that. This is the 2.5 liter turbo four cylinder. And you can tell that because You've got these oblong exhaust outlets, whereas the three and a half liter turbo, twin turbo V6 gets big round exhaust, which I like both options perfectly fine. Um, so I, I would gladly take either. All GV70s are all wheel drive, but they're rear wheel drive bias. And I, I think that's one of the things I like so much about it. Uh, I did mention the button for the hatch is right here. This does have the smart uh, hatch system in it. Uh, we've kind of got the vehicle on. I don't think it's going to work right now. Nope. Uh, so we've got it on for filming purposes. So I'll go ahead and hit that button. This is a compact luxury SUV and it's got comparable space to our compact mm -hmm. uh, SUV in the uh, Jeep Cherokee. What are your thoughts on interior space back here? We've got Easter uh, accoutrement that we're yeah. taking to your family <laughs> with my backpack as well. Um, I mean, I like the little cubbies here mm. on the side. There's one with a net over there. I, I, I mean, the space is fine. Right. It's, it would be fine for our family. Of course, we've talked about having more space in our next vehicle because we do like to road yeah. trip a lot yeah. and having a toddler. We've got a lot of stuff. Um, that, that would be the only downside as, as far as, I mean, I really think this would fit our, our family on a day to day basis. Mm most of the time. And Genesis, uh, being a luxury brand, puts the uh, very nicely bound uh, owner's manual back here in the rear storage compartment. So requisite SUV rear storage. This actually does have uh, rear seat releases uh, for both sides here on the sides. So you can access all of the cargo space very easily from the back here. and makes it very nice. nice. I do have to ask you, Holly, we've got uh, the button mm -hmm. on the hatch itself. You're five foot. I hate to keep bringing up yeah. your height, but how yeah. does this work for you? It's pretty tall, but pretty it's tall. okay. Yep. So it's it is a, a programmable, but uh, why don't you give it a push there and... It's programmable. 
I will say, I really like the feature. We did the grocery test. Right. The it does work. The feature of it opening, <laughs> it does work. But like technology, all technology. I've got it running for filming, so it, uh, I will put B-roll in here <laughs> of it I've actually I've been working. working, but how many times did you have to film it before it works? Let's check out the rear seat legroom and see what it's like sitting inside the GV70. All right, gearheads, rear seat legroom. Uh, I've got the seat in my seating position for my 510 self. I have folded the back seat straight up as if uh, we had just folded it down. So it is in its most upright position. Seat comfort back here is nice. It's cushy. Uh, leather is firm, but very comfortable. I did mention it is in its upright position. You can recline, which is very nice. I don't want to do the full recline. It has a pull down center armrest here. Uh, leather wrapped uh, door insets and very nice trim pieces. You actually do have a remote or a lock unlock button here back in the back and a very wide window switch. And my favorite uh, rear seat feature ever, uh, peasant blockers, which in this vehicle truly are peasant blockers. But let's see what it's like to install a car seat in the Genesis GV70. All right, car seat installation in the back seat. So first things first, I always feed the rear anchor tether through underneath the headrest, get this back into place. Genesis does label where the anchor points are for these latches on the seat. They are relatively easy to get to. They are not shrouded in plastic or anything like that, uh, but the, the firmness of the leather allows you very easy access uh, to latch them quite easily and simply, and then tighten the seat up from here. Now, these do not have sliding uh, seats. The, they are stationary seats. So to get that rear anchor in place, I actually find myself going around to the back of the vehicle and it's got a shallow enough compartment that I can very easily reach back here and get this tightened into place and good to go. So not as simple as some, but obviously not complicated at all. Why don't we hop inside and let Holly behind the wheel see what she thinks of this Genesis. All right, Holly, setting off, letting you drive. Um, Finally. Well, I've been trying to get you to drive this one. I have. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, how am I supposed to drive it when you're in it all the time? Okay. No. To be fair, yes, I you, have. You've um, tried to get me to drive it once, and it wasn't at a time I could really drive it. That was it. That's true. And then you allowed Not me to drive it. Today? <laughs> today just now. I've tried to get you to drive this one more. I want you to drive this one. I really like this it's one. It's because you want to buy this one. I, I do. I would take this exact one as it sits. Uh, but we all know I'm gushing over this one. I, I need to know. They need to know. Uh, that I'm gushing over this yes, one? Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So what are your driving impressions? You have ridden in it more than driven yes. in it. So uh, before we get out too much on the road in it. What are your thoughts just overall the experience here in the cabin um i do like it a lot it feels very luxury i um like the screens mm. the technology enough um, i like the little jeweled the little jewel turn turn dials you know i like that oh my favorite part oh, yes the colors yes that's my favorite part all the ambient lighting that you can adjust and, and yes. make certain I, colors and there's like what like 10 different colors to it well no, because yeah. you can customize your color and you've got a color wheel so you can you can make it whatever color you want in oh. here which it's hard to see here in the overcast day but it's all around this center gloss black section here uh it's on the door panels here it's in the door yeah, pockets it's and like you said, on the door panel, which is different. Yep. And um, it's even in the back, too. So Tucker really liked that, riding around with me. He's like, oh, Daddy, it's even in the back. It's even yeah. underneath the center console piece here. So it really does glow uh, very nicely. 
in the dark. We've got it set on amethyst, I do believe, which is a, a purple color and just complements the white and black very well. Yeah, this. Yeah. I like I like things that you can customize mm -hmm. like that. My Mini Cooper, you could do different colors too. I know. Yeah. I really liked that. I saw an article very recently about how uh, interior lighting is the new luxurious touch because it just elevates the perceived value of a vehicle. But perceived value or not, this vehicle really is a value. It's so quiet and comfortable mm -hmm. on the road. It's well put together. No like creaks or rattles. You've got leather wrapped with real stitching up here. Uh, you do have a little bit of gloss black, which I'm never really a huge fan of, but it works. Uh, dual zone climate, a screen for your climate controls and your heated and ventilated seats, but it's very quick and responsive and works very well. I, I like it very much. The cooled seats. Yeah. They don't remember that they were turned on if you turn the vehicle off and back on, which I knock against it, but uh, they will work even if you turn the air conditioning off, your ventilated seat will still blow air, which on a cool spring day, if you've got all the windows dropped and you just don't want your backside to melt, uh, having the fan on just gives you that nice extra bit of cooling that you need where you may not need it everywhere else. I, I really like it. Sorry, I, I've taken over again. <laughs> yeah, it's this year review. Um, the steering wheel yes. is a steering yes, wheel. It is. Like it is, it's really soft mm -hmm. and smooth, but it's thick. Yes. I, I mean, I like that a lot. Yep. I, I feel like driving this kind of feels like, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know a lot about car engines and stuff like that, but it feels like sportier to me than some of the other SUVs we've driven. Absolutely. So quick synopsis. Uh, Kia made the Stinger sports sedan hatchback thing and journalists loved it, compared it to BMW, said it was an excellent car, but nobody's buying cars anymore. So uh, Genesis smartly as their premium brand uh, made a premium SUV and here we are. So interior design, we know you like the ambient lighting. You know you like the screen i like how it is touch screen as well as dial interface here so you can mm -hmm. interact with it with the dial this is actually a trackpad as well so you can actually swipe across and use it that way or you can click it over you can spin it all sorts of things you can go home uh, very nice uses weather data and outside conditions for Does this it home screen somewhere where my speed limit is Digitally? No, no that is I one of know. very few nitpicks I have on this vehicle. I have looked everywhere for a digital speedometer, doesn't have it. Uh, it does have a display of the posted speed limit, but yes, I cannot for the life of me find a digital sp speed limit in in this vehicle anywhere. Hmm. So. Uh, uh -oh. Slight omission, but could be fixed with a software update. So, Genesis, come on, help help a brother out. The the other thing that's a kind of a negative for me is you can really tell when the automatic start stop start stop. Yeah, you, but not with the air. Right. So that's good, but yeah, I mean it's like you're settling down right. when it goes off. Which. Like yeah. most vehicles that have automatic start-stop for fuel savings, the defeat button is to your left up there uh, on the other side of the steering wheel uh, next to your brightness controls, which I uh, found out while driving this at night, the interior brightness controls for the dash go up to 100 and they are in what? one increments. So yeah. <laughs> like you can tick, 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 all the way up to a hundred uh, for your screen brightness. So you can dial it in just perfectly. I noticed the same. Just like, you know, I like yes. that. You're kind of complaining about it, but I'm like, look, you know, sometimes <laughs> 17 is too bright and 15 is not bright enough. You need a you Well, need I a do, do appreciate the even number. Uh, the same <laughs> is true of the volume uh, controls here. 
they 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 go up quite a bit. Uh, I have not tested the full uh, range of uh, the max number, but turning it up to 11 barely does anything. It, it goes up quite a ways in here. We're gonna do our patented uh, Brick Street ride and handling test here in downtown Tyler, Texas. We'll have to come back for Tucker to do the head wobble test. Yes, <laughs> uh, Tucker is not with us. We are gonna go pick him up from his grandparents, but uh, it is a sports sedan based vehicle. So it does lean a little bit more towards the sporty side of things. We are in the eco mode. There is also a comfort mode, which adjusts throttle response and uh, your suspension dampening as well. But for an old brick street, it's calm. It, it's it's not, not loud. Right. It's pretty smooth. There have been smoother rides. Right. Uh, the only noise that we're hearing in here are things that we've brought with us. Yeah. Like, it is very quiet and poised in, in here. So, very nice. Very well done. Uh, very good. Luxurious cabin in this one. Yes. So, uh, I, I say for what it is, it, it passes with flying colors. But, again, I'm... I'm Unashamedly <laughs> biased on this one. Uh, further interior bits uh, as we talk around in here. Like this, little. Yeah, so the switch gear in here is very nice. The the little metal on the ends of uh, the turn signal stalks just give you that nice upscale uh, factor. The little toggle buttons right here are nice. The volume and tuning knobs aren't even knobs; they're scroll wheels which are the only acceptable alternative <laughs> to a knob because it still spins. You can go and swipe it really quickly. And it goes the right way. Yes, it goes the right way. Up for up and down for down. Yes, logical, right? <laughs> and then we haven't even talked about the roof above us, but oh, yeah. full I piano skylight that goes very far back over the rear seats. And it is the darkest tinted roof of any vehicle that we've had which I truly appreciate, helps keep the temperature just right in here. Uh, I, I noted you and I really have not put the thermostat below 70 degrees, which is unlike us. Normally we're in the 60s, but this cabin has been extremely comfortable temperature-wise, volume-wise, harsh ride-wise. Like This has been a very pleasant place to spend time, which you've already noted. How much time I spent, spent a lot. In here. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I do really like the sunroof. It's nice, and you know, living in Texas in a hot place with the summer sun, right? That tinted roof really does come. It's really nice. Yeah, in in my Jeep, I have to close the thing when I right. park it anywhere. LED lights all around in here. A little sunglass holder or taco holder, depending on <laughs> depending on. Uh, where you're from or what you, what your priorities it's are. It's not our taco holder. <laughs> let's like... Yeah. We've put no tacos. It's a, it's a press vehicle. No tacos have gone in there here. Uh, <laughs> your, mirror, your visors have very large mirrors with a ceiling mounted light. So I really like... This is perhaps the largest vanity mirror I think I've ever seen in a vehicle. And... Uh, the visors do go forward and back for extra sun protection for both passengers. I like that a lot. Since this is my review. Okay. Yes. <laughs> one thing I really like is the chair goes really high up. Yes. I don't even have it the highest up right now that yes. it is. Um, so as a shorty, I appreciate that. I appreciate being able to see over the hood. So we haven't even talked about one of the most unique uh, luxury and comfort features uh, as you talk about the chair it does have two-person memory seat but I'm actually going to go in here to the vehicle settings and smart posture care it recommends a posture fitting the driver's body type and provides a clinical analysis for back health so not only does it seat you in what it thinks is the proper uh, seating position for you it uses that lumbar support for uh, additional uh, comfort and uh, back health for you. Uh, we cannot 
do this feature while we are in drive, but uh, it asks for it yeah, it asks for your height, it asks for your inseam, and it asks for your weight, and it takes all of those factors into play and puts you in the proper seating position. I did it for me because I know my inseam. Uh, you you joked that's more of a, a men's clothing thing, uh, so we'll have to do it for you before we give this car back for sure. Um, I noted I had to tweak it just ever so slightly. It felt just a little off, but who knows? Maybe that's how I'm supposed maybe to. Maybe you're supposed yeah. to be sitting like that. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, but um, yeah, I have the seat is very comfortable. I have sat in more comfortable, but there are a lot of options. I like the lumbar support, mm -hmm. of course. Um, Heated and ventilated seats. Yeah, that's nice. That's I, nice as well. I am struggling to find things I don't like about this. Uh, okay, we get it. You, you like it. What we say get you? it. <laughs> what say you? What no, are I, the final? I like it. I really like it. I would say that my my biggest, my biggest, which I know you can turn it off. It's the automatic start stop. It's really right. noticeable. But the ride is smooth. Um, I really like the steering wheel. I really like the customizable interior lights. Mm -hmm. uh, A little screen it comes up when you're going to switch lanes. I like that to show you what's in the other lane. Yeah. I like well, that. Well, uh, I believe we've covered everything in this one. I really like it. It seems that you do too. I do. And if you really like the Genesis GB70, uh, as of right now, search for a participating Hyundai dealership uh, that is licensed to sell Genesis vehicles. They have started opening up their own standalone dealerships. The first one ever uh, opening up not that far away from us in Lafayette, Louisiana. So we are seeing more and more emphasis on the Genesis brand. I think it is an incredible value. This vehicle comes in at just over $50,000 but starts at $41,000. So just an unbelievable value in the luxury SUV segment and is definitely worth shopping if you are in the luxury market. But that, that about does it for us. Uh, be sure and subscribe. You can check out my solo review, all kinds of other stuff we've done together. Unfortunately, our son Tucker is not with us here in this one. We're going to pick him up from the grandparents as we speak. But until next time, gearheads, bye. on here a little snack for you maybe? Yeah, a little a little drinky drink okay okay what stop sorry i need a nourishment or i was gonna die okay. very well thought out we didn't talk about the Smart Park. Smart Park? I'm surprised you even allowed me to. So, yes. I